We'd like to welcome you to a new series of videos that we're starting here at Multiplying Freedom. It's called Biblical Insights. This series is going to cover all sorts of topics, approaches, understandings of the Bible, how to read it, how to understand it, how to apply it, how to understand various controversial topics. And yes, there are controversial topics when it has to do with the Bible. I'm sure you've noticed that. Some of these topics and some of these approaches are going to be new to some people. Others will be old standards, but we're going to put them all out there because there are some people who are very interested in the Bible, but they don't have much background. They've never read books on how to study. They've never been trained about how to study the Bible, how to understand it properly. This is something that generally takes people a while to get when I started out, I was in my 20s. I had no Bible background. I had no Christian faith. The night that I came to faith in Christ, the night that I first trusted Christ for salvation, I went home and there on my shelf was a Bible that I'd gotten in Sunday school, maybe 15 years before, 20 years before. For some reason, I hung on to it. I didn't read it because I couldn't understand it. It was a revised standard version. It was not in a very large, appealing typeface. It wasn't easy to read. I couldn't really figure out what to do with it. So I just put it on the shelf figuring maybe someday I'll look at it. Well, that day came and the night that I came to faith, I sat down and I opened it up and it opened up to the book of Psalms in the 20s. And I read Psalm 25, I read Psalm 23, I read Psalm 27. And I started praying the words of the Psalms. Now, I'd never been taught to do this. I'd never been told that I should do it. Um, I had the Holy Spirit in my heart. I had the Holy Spirit in my life guiding me now in a brand new decision that I'd only taken, that I'd only done hours before. But I sat up for quite a while reading and praying the words of the Psalms. And I had a voracious, ravenous appetite for the Bible. And that was 40 years ago. And I still have a ravenous appetite for Scripture, for books about Scripture, for teaching Scripture. Those of you who know uh, our ministry or have seen us do Bible interpretation, Bible teaching, you know, this is part of what we do and what we love. So some of the things we're going to be getting into is how do we interpret the Bible? What does it mean to interpret the Bible? Shouldn't you just like read the Bible and do what it says? What do you mean interpret the Bible? Doesn't the Bible just tell you what to do or tell you what it means? Well, there are varying opinions about that. And I've held varying opinions on those questions over the years. How do we keep from making mistakes when we read the Bible? If I try to interpret the Bible, won't I make mistakes? Uh, won't I get in trouble? Uh, might, you know, will, I, will God be mad at me? Will, I, will people get mad at me? Well, that's why we're here. That's why we're launching this new series. Because a lot of people, they go to church, they hear sermons, but they're never told or trained or taught. This is how you approach this book, the Bible. They might carry a Bible, they might not. They might have them at home, they might not. They might read them on their phone. People, it's all different now than when I grew up in the pre-internet, pre-smartphone days. You had paper Bibles and you picked them up and held them in your hand or put them in your lap. Now it's all different, but we're going to get into all of this. How do you evaluate Bible translations? There are dozens of them. Um, on these shelves back here, I've got quite a few, and I've got quite a few in other places in the house here. How do you understand which translations are the best, the most accurate? What does it mean to have an accurate translation? Does accurate mean literal? Um, or maybe, maybe not. These are questions people ask, and many times they're not sure where to turn for answers. They can turn to us here. We've been doing this for a very long time, helping people understand the Bible, helping people understand the role of the Bible in getting to know God, in becoming a disciple. And so these are some of the questions that we'll get into. And yes, we are going to name names. 
I'm going to take a number of videos and evaluate various translations by name and say, these are the strengths of the translation. These are the weaknesses of this translation. There's no such thing as a translation with no weaknesses or no shortcomings because they're done by people. And everybody who knows this business well knows any translation has its weaknesses. People who are honest and knowledgeable will admit this. And I can tell you which ones they are and the strengths and weaknesses. Again, this is my passion. I've been passionate about this for a very long time. How do you read the Bible so you can keep going? Many of us have seen Bible reading plans, how to read your Bible in a year. Well, you know, if you can do that, praise the Lord, it's wonderful. But what if that's not worked for you? I've come up with a number of plans over the years that have worked for me very, very well. Over the years, I've been able to read scripture regularly, consistently for decades. And I found out what works for me. What works for me might work for you. Because the first rule of Bible reading plans or Bible reading approaches is do it in a way that you can do consistently over time, week after week, month after month. However you do that, whether it's, you know, five sentences a day or a chapter a day or five chapters a day. It doesn't matter as long as you're doing it consistently. What are these plans? I'll tell you. I'm giving away my years of experience for free. How do you keep from making serious mistakes when you're trying to interpret the Bible or figure it out? There are things that you can do that will keep you safe. Doesn't mean you'll never make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes interpreting the Bible. I've done it and so has everyone else who's ever tried to do this. Any Bible teacher, any preacher you want to talk about, if you got them, you know, if you got them relaxing with a cup of coffee or something, they said, so tell me, what was it like when you were young? They'd probably roll their eyes and say, oh, you don't want to even hear about what it was like. My first experiences in trying to teach and preach and train people from the Bible, not very good. But I've learned a lot, and I'm here to give you what I've learned so that you can grow in your understanding and your ability to be a blessing by using the Bible to help other people. What does it mean to read devotionally? What does it mean to study? How do you study? How do you do a word study? There are some ways to do word studies that are very helpful. I do my own Greek and Hebrew word studies. I've, I don't have a graduate theological degree, but I've learned how to do it, and I have the materials that help me do that. I can help you with the basics. What about those extra books, the Apocrypha, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, these other books, uh, Enoch? We're doing a series on Enoch. What about this? Are, are, is that safe? Is it okay? Should I be reading those? Should I stay away from them? Well, I'll tell you very honestly why I use them and why Nancy and I read them and what we hope to get out of them, what's helped us, and what to watch out for. Any literature has its strengths and weaknesses when it comes to learning more about God. And we'll tell you about it right here. What about translation philosophy? Every translation, every translation team or translator has to have an idea. What are we trying to do and how are we trying to do it? What kind of finished product do we want to give people? That's called having a translation philosophy. And everybody has one, whether they tell you or not, or whether they even think of it that way or not. They have an idea of how they're going to do their job, how they're going to deliver a finished product to the reader. It does not come by mistake. It doesn't come by coincidence. It doesn't just happen. No, you've got to decide how you're going to do it, what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. I know the translation philosophies for all the major translations. They're not hard to understand once you get the hang of this. I'll, we'll talk about that. How do you use study Bibles effectively? There's ways that are very helpful, and there are ways that are unhelpful in the long term. These are some of the way things we're going to do in this. 
We'll also do some teaching on biblical passages and biblical topics. I'm passionate about Psalm 91. I'm going to be doing a series of videos. We're going to go into Psalm 91 in great depth in things that most people have never heard of unless you hear about them in graduate school or you happen to have a teacher that references some of this stuff from the Dead Sea Scrolls, from other writings of in antiquity. We're going to get into that. We're going to wind up and for this video for now, but what I'll do is I will leave you with a hint and a challenge. Many times, if you're reading the Bible, you're reading a passage, might be Romans, could be Psalms, could be anything, and you run into something that you don't really understand. Well, most people have gotten the idea that the best way to solve that problem is to get a study Bible or a commentary and go look up what the experts say. After all, they're the experts, right? Well, I'm here to tell you, study Bibles and commentaries and anything that gives somebody's opinion about what the passage means, you might be getting some help and you might be getting something that's not helpful. I'll give you a little challenge. Try this sometime between now and our next video. When you don't understand a passage, Write down the verse and the reference, Romans 5, 24, Psalm 138, verse 2. Write it down, and then however you do this, you could use uh, version, you could use Bible Hub. Go through and read it in different translations. This is what I did when I was a very, very young Christian. I didn't know anything. I didn't have money. I didn't know what to buy, but I had a used bookstore that I went to, and they bought a minister's library, and I picked up various translations, dozens of them for a few dollars a piece. And I learned very early, reading passages in different translations is really helpful. So I would, I would encourage you, next time you're not sure what a passage means, start reading. King James Version, ESV, New American Standard, the NIV, the New Living, the God's Word translation, Good News translation, formerly called the Today's English Version or the Good News Bible, the Contemporary English Version. I like that version quite a bit. The Message, the Passion Translation. Now, the Message and the Passion Translation, they are on the line of, is it a translation or is it a paraphrase? I'm going to do a video that deals with the message and the passion translation in detail because I've read them both, I've studied them both, and I know what the authors and translators have said about it and also what other scholars have said about it. So try reading a verse or a passage that you're not sure about. Try reading it in at least four translations, some that are more literal, like the ESV or the New American Standard, some in something that's more dynamic. God's Word, the CEV, the NLT. I favor the ESV, the NIV, and the NLT. Between the three of those, you can usually get an idea what's going on. If, it, if you're still not sure, try the CEV, the Contemporary English uh, Version. It's still a very bona fide scholarly trans translation, but it really brings out it just comes at things from a different perspective. Try reading it in three or four or five translations, and you'll be amazed what happens. And I think once you start doing that, you will develop a habit that'll do you well for many years to come. So we're excited about this. You can tell when I'm excited, people can tell. This is something that means a lot to me. I'm passionate about the Bible and helping people understand it so that they can hear and understand what is God saying and what do I do about it and how can I help others. This is what we're trying to do with this new series, Biblical Insights. We're going to cover a lot of ground. We're going to take up matters that, you know, you've heard discussed before and probably some things you haven't heard discussed before. But we're going to get into them. We're not going to back away from controversial topics. If you have suggestions for what you would like to see taken up in, in Biblical Insights, leave us a comment on the, uh, on the YouTube video, and we'll take it into consideration. I've got a lot of ideas, 
but I am very interested in hearing what people want to know. What are the things that you're wondering about? Is, you know, it could be anything, but we've gone on long enough here. I try to keep these relatively short, but I'm very excited about launching this tonight. And I pray that you will stick with us and see what we can learn together. God bless you.